I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What do you get if you cross a kangaroo with an elephant? Giant holes all over Australia. And what did the mother kangaroo say when her baby was lost? She said, my pocket's been picked. Okay, our gospel reading today recounts the Annunciation to Mary. It is probably one of the most beloved scenes in the gospel. This intimate moment between Mary and the angel Gabriel when a young girl, a teenager, said yes to God. We have very much domesticated this scene. Artists have preserved the moment in wood and glass and paint. Mary is usually portrayed as dressed in yards of silk, golden hair arranged neatly, nails perfectly manicured, and outside her window is a beautiful garden. It's hard to remember that this is a girl, probably in her early teens, who is troubled by the angel's appearance. A better translation could be panic-stricken. Angels are very popular today. They're usually pictured as soft, cuddly and friendly. Yet in the Bible, those visited by angels are not usually thrilled by it. The people of the Bible recognise that when God sent an angel to you, some major rearrangement of your life was in the works. Things were going to get more rather than less turbulent. Do you know that God likes to stir us up and cause trouble sometimes? But he's wanting to get us to the place that he wants us in for blessing. Has anyone had an angel come and visit them here? I had a parishioner who saw an angel once and I thought, now, is this person cracked or, or whatever? But she was actually a very spiritual person. And Billy Graham, that great evangelist, in one of his books just clearly says about the importance, the reality of angels and their importance in the ministry um, that goes on. So poor old Mary, what a challenge. And there's archangels and there's angels. And I think good theology says we all have a guardian angel and some days don't we need it. To this disturbing announcement of the angel, Mary says, May it be done to me according to your word. These few words carry within them a revolutionary significance. With these words, something in the universe shifted gear. With those words, a spark of new light entered our world as deep within Mary's body, a baby began to form. With these words are Mary's response to the call and to the promise of God. They represent a willingness to believe what is not immediately apparent, readiness to be used in risky and even painful ways. They represent obedience and surrender. Those words carry within them the seeds of all the joyful mysteries, the luminous mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries and the glorious mysteries. The birth, the presentation, the finding, the agony, the scourging, the crucifixion 
and the resurrection and ascension and Pentecost. Surrender is not a word we like to hear because it sounds weak. But when uttered in response to God, it is actually heroic. Those words of Mary changed not only Mary's life, but also the life of the world. When we utter these words to God, I am the servant of God the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. They're also heroic because then we are changed and so is part of our world. We can admire the moment of the Annunciation and revere it, but what can we learn from it? Is it just about Mary? Or is it also in some profound way about us? Are we willing to obey God when his call comes to us? I think when I was about the age of 12, and in a worshipping family, I said to God, listen, mate, if you'll prove to me that you're true, you're true and real, I'll do anything for you. So now at 71, I'm still willing to do anything. As we may not see a winged archangel in our room coming with a message, but God's call comes to each of us in various ways. Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord, when we experience a change in our life, such as an assignment or a job transfer? Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord, when a spouse is afflicted with Alzheimer's disease? Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord when we discover we have cancer. Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord when our family members have problems and turn to us repeatedly for help. Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord when the burdens of age start to weaken our bodies. Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord when our plans don't come out as we expect. Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord when we have to carry a cross of addiction or weakness? Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord in giving witness to the sacredness of all human life? Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord in a time of change, when we're called to widen our vision? And you know, it doesn't matter how old you get, there's always something new can break forth from God's word and there's always more that we can enter into and learn from the living God. Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord if we're living among all the distractions of affluence, the shopping centre and the internet and leisure opportunities, can we say, I am the servant of the Lord in how we use our prosperity? Can we say, I am the servant of the Lord when the Lord calls us to walk a road which we had not planned or with people with whom we would not otherwise choose to be. This magnificent scene where Mary consents to God's plan when she submits to a solemn reordering of her life is about the supernatural conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. To limit it to that, is to miss an important dimension of the Annunciation, 
that can apply to all of us. It is also about God coming to us, about God's entrance into human life, not through an angel, but in ways we can perceive, comprehend and embrace. God comes to us through events, people, challenges, responsibilities and family. Let's not domesticate the Annunciation and leave it only as a devotional scene. Let's release its power and start to see it as a moment that challenges us. Are we willing to surrender to God as Mary did? Are we willing to let God truly be Emmanuel? In this season of Advent, as we prepare for the coming of the Lord, are we willing to let God come into our life if he comes with the word of challenge? If he comes with a call to commitment? If he comes with a summons to be patient or heroic or cooperative or visionary or loyal or especially prayerful? Are we ready to surrender to God as Mary did? We all have lots of plans for our life and his plan makes everything that happens to us coherent. Are we willing to accept God's will as it manifests itself in teaching, in scripture and in the call to discipleship? Are we willing to say, I am the servant of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word? If we can, then we will be ready for Christmas, the coming of the Lord into our life, making our life not just a series of personal plans, but a dwelling place of God's light and love and his will. I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. That is Mary's key to the tremendous peace of Christmas. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for Advent. Thank you for this preparation time to welcome the baby Jesus, to love and adore and to give thanks. Amen.